All right, welcome everybody. It's February. Uh, welcome to February 2nd Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As you are probably all aware, two things that we must abide by on this call. The first is the antitrust policy that is currently displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Uh, so for our agenda today, we have some announcements. Um, if who's ever sharing would take us to the uh, agenda, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, so the first one is the standard one, the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter that goes out each Friday. Uh, if you have something that you would like to include in that newsletter, please leave a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda. The second one, uh, so last week we approved project reports being submitted via GitHub. Uh, Rye and I worked on basically getting, Rye did all the old reports and got them migrated over to GitHub. I set up some, a default template for the project reports. We've actually had our first project report submitted on GitHub. So uh, in the future, if you are somebody who files project reports, GitHub is the place for those. Uh, the third announcement that we have is that the Hyperledger mentorship program has kicked off. Uh, so we're currently looking for mentorship project proposals. And if you do have a project proposal, please submit that prior to March 15th. Uh, we will be having men come and talk to us uh, in a couple weeks to Tell us more about what the Hyperledger Mentorship Program is and also to put a call out for people who would be willing uh, to review the different project proposals that come out uh, to get the ones that we think are um, kind of match the criteria that the Mentorship Program has. So uh, that's in a couple of weeks, but in the meantime, if you do have a project, a mentorship project that you would like to propose, please do so. All right, any other announcements that anybody has? Okay, not seeing any hands or anybody else coming off mute. I will take that as a resounding no. Um, so as far as quarterly reports, we are still waiting on the URSA report to come in. Uh, we did, as I mentioned, get the Hyperledger Sawtooth uh, coming in on GitHub. Um, so I link here in the agenda about the PR and a rendered version of that report for you to take a look at. I think as of this morning, uh, and I'm sure somebody might have snuck in since the last time I looked, but when I looked, there were, I think, six people who had had a chance to review that, and we're still waiting on five others to take a look at that. So please do take a look at that report. The Hyperledger Aries report came in last week um, and was reviewed by, I think, the majority of us. But any questions on any of the quarterly reports? OK, another resounding no. Uh, so we do also have uh, some upcoming reports today. We have the Indy and the Anand creds that are also due. And then we have uh, Hyperledger Iroha that's coming due next week. So we will look forward to receiving those. All right, so for discussion items, we have two discussion items. The first one is something that I added yesterday since we were moving other things to GitHub. I uh, was curious if we wanted to also move these meeting agendas to GitHub. And then uh, the other agenda item that we have is the task force proposals. Um, I will say that there are a number of POC members who have not put their name anywhere. And I don't know if that's because you're not interested or you just haven't completed the, the uh, task to add your name to any of those task forces. Definitely important to do that. So if you wanna do that um, here while, we're, while I'm wasting a bit of time, um, please do do that so that we can make sure that we know which ones we want to prioritize. Um, but let's have a discussion about the first agenda item. Do we want to move meeting agendas to GitHub or do we want them to stay on the wiki? 
So if you wouldn't mind opening up the proposal there, uh, whoever's sharing the screen on the, the meeting agendas to GitHub. Um, so yeah, like I said, as far as uh, other things that we're moving to uh, GitHub and to basically toc.hyperledger.org, uh, wanted to see if we wanted to move the meeting minutes there, specifically having the TOC chair create a pull request uh, to add the meeting agenda uh, during the TOC meeting, having the PR modified to include any of the attendees that we have. And then after uh, the TOC meeting, uh, Ryan, I think you have a comment about the recordings and then just going through the process of getting approvals and getting that merged to, um, to GitHub. So Ryan, did you want to comment on the, the recordings piece? You came off mute, but we don't hear you. Okay, there. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, the the recordings are obviously much too large to host on GitHub. Uh, I was thinking, uh, for other reasons, I've been looking into where we can store big stuff that doesn't change. Archive.org is a free place to host big things that don't change. So I was thinking about using archive.org, um, but I'm not married to that. Uh, the other thing that we could do is to continue to upload those to the wiki and point to the wiki. Um, I don't have strong feelings either way. Okay. Um... I think the, the main concern is that we want to put them someplace where we won't lose them, right? So that if we need to go back and listen to them. Um, I remember just recently we had a question come up about some decision that we had taken and why did we take that? Uh, and we, we dug through the recordings, right, to listen through kind of our reasoning. Um, so I want to make sure that wherever we put the recordings, we're not going to lose them. Right, which sounds very reasonable. Yeah. Timo. Um, yeah, is, is it just like for um, the TOC meetings this, or is it like more as also to try for more general because all the other working groups and stuff is hosted on, on the wiki? Like, is there a, a bigger plan behind this or is it just like for this specific meeting? Yeah, so this is specifically for the TOC meeting. So if, if you take a look and go to toc.hyperledger.org, you will see that we're, we're starting to move things over there that are specifically related, related to the uh, Technical Oversight Committee. Uh, so we have all the governing documents, we have uh, the guidelines that we've uh, developed over the years, uh, information for us as members, who we are, as, as well as what do we, what are we responsible for, and then the project updates that we just moved over. Um, so my thought was that we would have a, kind of a fifth drop down here that was the meeting minutes um, to, to really have them all in one place. Okay, yeah, I think for, for the other meetings, like what, what I think what one of the benefits is of using the, the Hyperledger Wiki, although I'm always lost uh, there, um, is the collaborative uh, features of it and that multiple people can add links and take notes at the same time, but I'm not sure how, how relevant that is the TOC um, meeting notes. Yeah, it's a good point, Timo. I think there's been a couple of times when we have done some collaborative editing on some documents on the wiki during this meeting. Very few. I think I can probably count on one hand uh, the number of times that we've done that. So uh, probably not as important as maybe some of those other meetings, but it's something that, yeah, is worth considering. Anybody else have any thoughts on this? Bobby. So I just have a question. So as a foundation, are we moving away from confluence? Is that like the goal of this? Or is it because a lot of the other uh, special interest groups and all those part of the trainings are get them familiar with the wiki page. Um, and I'm just curious if that's a trend moving away from confluence as again, a Hyperledger foundation. 
I'm, I'm going to say no. Um, so the my original desire behind moving a bunch of stuff to GitHub, a bunch of historical stuff to GitHub, was that we lost some of the foundational documents for Hyperledger. Like we don't have the original Sawtooth uh, proposal anywhere that I can find. There are a couple other documents that are missing. So I want to preserve those. And the same thing for the uh, for the meeting, uh, sorry, for the project updates. Uh, in the wiki, there's no, uh, like anyone can go in and edit these pages on the wiki. So we don't know who actually reviewed what at what time. Uh, so that was why I wanted to move project reports over. Uh, and the the TSC, uh, sorry, the TOC meeting agendas are something else that uh, we, some of them are, are lost to time. So I, for those items, I, I want those there. Is Hyperledger moving away from Confluence? No. Yeah, and Rai, I will add to your point about things being mo modified after the fact. So last year we had some meeting minutes where people were going through and trying to clear up their backlog of tasks that they had to, um, to review, right, for the project reports. But in a lot of, in, in more than one case, I did see that people checked themselves as having attended a TOC meeting that they did not attend um, because we didn't we didn't uh, remove it as a task item for them. So uh, you know, I think there is a there is some information that is in the wiki that is not actually correct based on the the TOC meeting. So very similar to to what you see with the project reports potentially being. Um, modified or checked off. I, I don't know how many times I've had somebody like uncheck the fact that I've reviewed a, a project report, but um, you know, th there's a similar sort of issue that exists with the TOC meetings today. Jim? Sorry, can you find the unmute button? Um, <laughs> I think it just takes some getting used to. Uh, uh, there was at least two incidents in the past year where I needed to update the agenda. So I would have to, in the new process, make a pull request to the agenda for that to be uh, merged and ready for the meeting. Uh, just feels a bit funky, but um, I, I, I can see the benefit of doing this versus a uh, wiki for archiving and, and tracking purposes. So I, I'm willing to give it a try, but I think, you know, in terms of the convenience, uh, I think there's definitely a loss of that, but at least for myself, I'm, I'm willing to give this a try. Yeah, thanks Jim. And another uh, concern that I think is, is worthwhile to have brought up. So um, think about whether or not you, add it to the agenda in the past and whether or not that uh, seems like it's a potential concern for you, um, other people, obviously, besides Jim. So, Marcus? Yeah, uh, so just a, fo a quick follow-up. Uh, I assume the TM uh, TOC members will be made at least a writer uh, uh, access so we can make a pull request directly on, on this uh, repository rather than having to fork uh, to our own. I, uh, go ahead, Ryan. I, I think that's undecided. Um, I, my guess is yes. I, I, how is it today? I, I can't tell you off the top of my head what, how it's set up. Uh, how could it be exactly as you said? I, I would just need to change the permissions to make it that way and basically do the auto branch create thing when you want to make an edit. Great, cool. I think the, thanks, Ryan. That's the, it for me. Thanks, Jim. I think the other thing we might consider is whether or not a draft PR would allow you to edit it directly, um, to edit the files that were were added, or alternatively, just to make the use the um, suggestion 
option, right, to suggest adding or, or modifying, uh, and then having the person, the chair who created it, right, accept that suggestion. Marcus? Uh, yes, thanks. So I absolutely see the benefits uh, of uh, maintaining the history of those documents a little bit better. Maybe we should consider putting this data on a blockchain instead of GitHub. Um, no, just joking. Um, have you also considered to use the GitHub wiki, which I guess is a little bit easier to maintain when multiple people would like to add things quickly? Uh, but I also, because I can also see the additional overhead of uh, I mean, adding addition to this pending PR, um, depending on on their uh, personal preferences, how to use Git, I guess, and um, and that could be complicated. The my experience with um, the uh, the proposals or the what you just mentioned, Tracy, uh, when you uh, suggest a change, if uh, then the PR creator accepts those, sometimes this results in an awkward uh, um, um, merge issues, at least this is my experience. So did you try the uh, GitHub Wiki for some other things like uh, that? Yeah, so Marcus, I've used a, I'm using a GitHub wiki right now with another project. Um, I think the reason, so, so there were, those were two, let me, let me take a step back. That was one of the two options that I considered, or one of the three options, I guess I considered, uh, was the wiki. The, the concern I have with the wiki, and I don't know if it's the case, but I don't think we can show the wiki on uh, toc.hyperledger.org. All right. Uh, yeah, that, that was, I think, my concern there. And then the second one, also the same concern that I con considered and throughout was uh, just creating an issue that we could track the meeting agenda on. Again, you can't display the issue on tlc.hyperledger.org, which is why I went to this uh, process of uh, PR, which, um, yeah, is a, is a bit more challenging, but would allow us to, to display those on uh, toc.hyperledger.org. Okay, I see. But so, so your personal preference would be, I mean, going this uh, um, PR route in, in terms of, I mean, if you think about the, the additional Git overhead you need to do, I mean, for the Wiki, you can do everything in the browser. Uh, for creating a PR, you have to do something in the terminal, depending on personal preferences of Git. Yeah, so for, for me, I guess I don't, I don't necessarily care whether or not we move over to the PR or we stick with Confluence, um, but it was, are we trying to, to move everything over? So therefore let's make this a suggestion, a question um, and see what people think. Right, like if you guys decide this is the worst idea in the world, Tracy, I'm perfectly happy to say, great, let's close it and move on. Right, uh, <laughs> I, I really, I'm really not tied to whether or not we have to do this or not. I'm, you know, presenting it as there are reasons to do it, uh, but I'm, I'm not tied to one way or the other. If I may, I just like to comment about the get overhead. Mm -hmm. of um, really, this is nothing. Um, GitHub offers quite a few facilities for doing things in line, so to speak. Um, and there's a little bit of automation in the web UI that can be done. If not, it can be self-hosted, um, at least partially with a script that removes the overhead entirely. If the issue is that people, large amounts of people, and Hyperledger has a lot of um, contributors, um, is whether or not we want people spending extra time doing this, um, I'd also raise that Confluence has a very different syntax, meaning that if we have the technical proposals to say hack and be, um, and it is in Markdown, transforming it into a format in which we could also host it on the Hyperledger Wiki is comparable to writing the thing from the ground up. So the fact that uh, the pull request allows us to use the Markdown syntax might actually save people time, not counting that we can also remove the Git overhead by a custom solution. So in any respect, um, it's, 
it's um, reasonable. Um, I think that a pull request workflow has more advantages in terms of developer convenience, let's just say. Just a comment. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. Any other thoughts or comments on this? Do we think we want to vote on this? And if we do, is there somebody who would like to make a motion? I can motion to pass this. All right, thanks, Jim. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, I, I know, Marcus, I think in Rama, you were the other one who seconded. Um, thank yeah. you for that. All righty, let's do a let's do a voice vote um, because I'm not sure that everybody's behind this, and so I want to make sure we um, we know where we stand. Do you mean a roll call vote? Vote? Or yes, please. Vote? Yes, okay. yes, please. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, on the matter before the TOC, Arun. Yes. Bobby. No. David. Yes. Jim. Yes. Marcus. Yes. Peter. I guess I Peter's not. Peter. Timo. Yes. Tracy. Yes. Uh, Rama. Yes. Okay. Uh, the eyes have it. All right. Great. All right. So let's move on to the task force issues that we've created. Um, let's see if we've got some updates behind these. So I think we'll just go through these one by one and see if we've got any support for these. Uh, looks like with the supported projects, we have um, myself who has signed up. So that's probably not one we're going to prioritize. Um, for the badging life cycle, uh, we have Rama and Bobby who've signed up for that one. Uh, for the next one here, the security artifact task force, we have Marcus, Arno, and Hart that have signed up. Security vulnerability, we have Rama, Arno, and Hart. For the onboarding, uh, we have Bobby who signed up to be a leader and myself and Bobby as participants. For the documentation, Bobby has also signed up to be a leader and we have Rama and myself as participants, plus obviously Bobby. Um, the project best practices, Rama and myself. And then for the last one here, the best practices, uh Timo, you snuck right in there. I mean, um, Marcus and Dave and Timo. So uh just looking at that, yeah, Rama, you have a question? Uh, and just a comment. Uh, I believe Peter is on vacation this week, so uh he may sign up for some of these when he returns. I know uh, I did discuss with him about documentation, so he might be interested in joining that one. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And I know Stephen also mentioned in his chat uh, to the Hyperledger uh, TOC for this meeting that he was going to update the documentation and the pipeline ones uh, for that. Now, uh, did we have everybody on the call, every TOC member on the call sign up for mm -hmm. uh, task forces or do we have to add anybody to any of these task forces to, to make sure that we've got a complete list? Hey, Tracy, I just added myself to two of them. Okay, which two, Jim? Uh, that was security artifacts signing and best practices for projects. Okay, great, thank you. And Tracy, I had my Are name you? on project best practices too. Okay, this great. Is Dave. Thanks, yep. Dave. Hey, Tracy, I and haven't had a chance to add myself. I'll be adding after this call, but yes, I'll... I think Hart also mentioned on the chat that it can be anybody outside the TUC as well. Yes, 
For sure, for sure. Anybody outside the TOC can can sign up. Arun, are there specific ones that you're thinking about adding your name to so that we can uh, get kind of an accurate count of where people are at? Yes, so I'll be signing up for security, both the uh, task forces and on the onboarding uh -huh. content. These three are the okay. initial list, but I'll probably right. go through on that in a few more. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you, Arun. Um, okay. Anybody else who uh, hasn't had a chance or snuck in after I went through those? Okay. Um, so based on that, uh, I think where we're at is for sure the onboarding content and the documentation and the security task force seems to be and I think it was the vulnerability disclosure one heart that you said you wanted to prioritize. Uh, yes, Tracy, that was my opinion since I've sort of done some background on that one with the open SSF. Uh, but if you know if there's massive momentum towards another one, you know we could start with that one too. Um, okay. All right, and then I think the other one that might have had a lot. Yeah, it was the project best practices. Dave, you signed up for later. Okay, that's why I didn't catch your name. Um, I was looking at the list instead of the leader. Um, so great. Uh, so I know that we have leaders for the documentation, onboarding, and best practices. Um, I don't think we necessarily have a leader. Arun, are you still? Uh, I know you were the leader for the security task force previously. Is that something that you're still interested in doing or not? Yes. Um, um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I think we've got kind of the four out of the eight, which is kind of where we want it to end up. Um, any objections or thoughts that I missed something as I was going through there that we should have been focusing on besides those four? Okay, um, so I guess what I'd like to do and, and is to continue kind of the process that we had last, uh, last year, where we spend the first half an hour of the TOC calls on TOC topics, assuming we have any, and the rest of the time on the task force discussions. Um, now, by doing that, since we have four, that means that we have meetings at least once a month for these task forces, but that does not preclude us from having meetings in between the time that uh, the TOC, it's discussed at the TOC, right? So if you wanna have off cycle meetings, you can have off cycle meetings. Uh, if you're not, um, then it's not probably gonna take you a bit longer to make it through some of these tasks, uh, but, I think it's really important that it not only be a uh, TOC meeting that we're discussing these, but uh, that work gets done outside of that as well. So um, with that, I, I think the, the idea here would be to create some sort of order for going through these. And I don't know if any of the leaders would like to volunteer to step up first. Yeah, Rama, question. Uh, yeah, it's a quick question. Uh... In the past, do you have have you started separate Discord channels for each of these uh, so people can discuss? We have. Okay. Yes, yes, we have, and we can do that again. Um, we can create task force channels for each of these so that people can have their offline discussions there, as well as um, you know any sort of meetings that they might have. Bobby. Um, well, for the um, documentation and the onboarding, uh, the learning materials working group kind of has stepped up the members to help out with that, along with David. Um, and I believe that the plan is to maybe meet um, where the learning materials uh, development working group used to meet for those two task forces and maybe put like onboarding on one Monday and then the uh, documentation on another and then report back to the TSC, I would say in, in like two or three months 
for the final report on whichever one is closest. And then after that, two more months report on the next one. If that makes sense, I can put that in a document um, and solidify that schedule. Uh, so yeah, Bobby, I think it's great to, to meet on the off POC meetings. I think that's perfect. Uh, I do think that it's worthwhile to bring back the discussions though on a more frequent basis to the TOC so that any input uh, that the TOC might have can be had before, right? Uh, things are finalized, if you will, right? Or even help because I, I think it's important that um, that the TOC is is involved in these topics as well. Um, would you suggest, well, I guess there's right now four or five task force. Would you suggest that they rotate weekly? So every week, one of the task force catches the TOC up on what's happening? Uh, that's correct. Um, so exactly. Uh, I think there's four, right? I think we've got the security vulnerability disclosure. They're actually all um, kind of together the onboarding content, the documentation, and the project best practices. So uh, number 48, 47, 46, and 45, as they're listed here. Um, and so what I would like to do is create an order for those to come into the TOC, right? Um, we can start with the security vulnerability disclosure, um, have discussions in the TOC, as well as their off cycle meeting, uh, then the next week would be maybe the onboarding content and so on and so forth, right? Sounds good. Uh, is there is there a preference for where we want to start, or shall we just say those are the order that we're going to go in? No preference. Okay, let's call that the order that we're going to uh, go through these in and at the TLC. Um, so definitely I'll create some channels for us to discuss these items. If you are the leader of these task forces and you're going to set up a, a meeting uh, off cycle or when you would be coming into the TOC and discussing, uh, let that channel know so that people can join and uh, participate in those discussions. Also, if you're the leader of these task forces, make sure I captured the information properly so that uh, if there's something that we're supposed to be delivering on that I didn't capture or you think I overstepped in what we're supposed to be delivering on, please fix that so that uh, it's correct. Questions? Comments. Okay. Any other topics that anybody would like to discuss today? Is there, would we like to jump into any of these task forces and see if there's anything that we can talk about already? Or are we at a point where we think we're good? Bobby? Oh, well, I know for the two that I'm leading, I need time to organize. So um, that's fine. I guess uh, we're the documentation would, would be first, and that's in two weeks. So I'll have a report in two weeks. Okay. Sounds great. And Bobby, definitely reach out to, uh, once I set the channel, chat channels up, reach out there, ask questions of the participants who have uh, signed up for this. And Again, as was mentioned, if there's anybody on this call, because I do see that we have some non-POC members on the call, which uh, very much appreciate you guys joining us. If you would like to participate in these task forces, uh, please join us and add your thoughts and ideas. Hart. <clears throat> Thanks, Tracy. So talking about the security stuff really briefly, um, you know, particularly for the uh, vulnerability disclosure task force, I just wanted to mention that the open SSF has a biweekly working group uh, focused on vulnerability disclosure reporting. 
Uh, and once we have the chat channels up and everything, I'll post the information there. Uh, and if you're interested in security stuff, I would highly recommend that you attend their meeting, uh, which is at 8 a.m. Pacific on Wednesdays. So an hour after this time, but on Wednesdays. Um, you know, I think they're doing a lot of interesting stuff, but it's not exactly what we need uh, in terms of coming up with a template for a policy that lets projects sort of easily determine, you know, a good vulnerability disclosure policy that fits for them. Um, so I think this is also an opportunity where we can uh, push back uh, some output to the OpenSSF as well. We can say, hey, you know, we did this. Uh, this is what we determined sort of actually works in the wild and, and you should, you know, use this for your project as well. Um, so I'm sort of excited by the, you know, cross Linux Foundation uh, synergy here. Um, and, and if you have a chance and you're interested, I would definitely recommend attending that meeting. So thanks. Yeah, thanks, Hart. And I, I remember maybe it was you, Marcus, in our first meeting that we had this year where you were talking about those cross project um, kind of synergies and working with other projects to see best practices and those sorts of things. Um, so I think it's definitely a, a really interesting topic area for us to, to start to explore what that looks like as uh, as the TOC and as Hyperledger and these other projects want to, to communicate and work together. All right, any other comments, questions? And Hart, did they did they just have the security uh, working group uh, for the vulnerability disclosure this Wednesday, or was it is it going to be next Wednesday? Just last Wednesday and next Wednesday, so not this week. Okay, so um, is, is do you still think it's okay for us to start with that one next week, as far as um, as far as bringing it to the TOC and having a discussion? Uh, sure. Um, I may have trouble making the meeting next week, but as long as other people are comfortable talking about it, uh, I think it's fine. Okay. And Arun, obviously, as the leader, I think that question also ends up going towards you as well. Noted. Yes, thanks, Art. I'll join the next week's Wednesday's call as well. Great. Cool. All right. Any other comments, questions before we close out. Okay. Uh, so thank you all for your participation and we will be meeting again next week. So have a great week and we will talk to you then. Thanks a lot, Tracy. Thanks, Tracy. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.